Hi, I'm Pastor Roger Brown. God has gifted me the pleasure to pastor a dynamic, spirit-filled church called Life Changers Church International right here in Pittsburgh, Kansas. I believe God will use this sermon to impact your life and bring His greatness out of you. Man, I hope you get something out of this that will change your life. God bless you. Your time is very important, so I'm going to get right to the message. Have a wonderful day. I think most of our problem is with our churches today is we've done it for so long that we've become professional. And we, we, we know what to say, when to say it, what to say, when to shout hallelujah, that the things that we do wrong during the day, we've been so calloused because we've hurt so long that we think it's okay. Well, we, we're going to get them before they get us. But I'd rather put my guard up than to just be a sitting duck. You know how many times I've heard that? Preacher, I'm not going to let nobody ever do that to me again. Jesus did. You know what he said? Everybody say, uh-oh. He said, turn the other cheek. Well, preacher, I'd like to see you turn the other cheek. I hope I could. I'm not sitting here telling you that I would. I'm not sitting here preaching that saying I, I can do that. I hope that I can. But I'm telling you what Jesus said. I'm not telling you what I would do would be right. But Jesus said that when they come against you like that, to, to turn the other cheek and let, let them have it because God that exalts you, he'll exalt you in due time. In other words, God says there's a payment due on your life every time you follow the gospel and what his plans are. Now Luke records this story, and most of us sometimes, because I've been talking about uh, disciples and, 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 and outcasts, and most time when we read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we uh, sometimes if we are not real careful, we we uh, we associate Luke and and Mark as a disciple. But Luke was never a disciple of Jesus. Matter of fact, Luke didn't even come on board to even follow Jesus until after Jesus died. Luke found the apostle Paul in the prison because Luke was a physician. And when the Apostle Paul was broke down and cut up, Luke was the one who, who took care of his wounds. And the Apostle Paul began to testify about the good works of Jesus. And Luke became a recorder of the, of the Gospel of Acts and, and, also, and also the Gospel of Luke. And Mark wasn't a disciple. He was one that recorded. The only disciple was Matthew and John. But, 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 but now you see what Jesus is doing. When he's calling the outcasts and he's moving them in, he's putting people in right places and even after he's died and gone he's still pulling people and he's still putting people because when the church world cannot see what's going on and when God can't work through the church and in the church he'll bypass the church and find somebody out on the street he'll find the dope pit out in the dope yard he'll find the drunk in the bar come on somebody he'll find the divorcee three or four times he'll find the prison inmate this spent 11 years in prison uh, and call him to preach. Uh, he'll find the men and women uh, who are hungry. Uh, my God, to serve a God uh, that is alive. Uh, sometimes uh, when you look at the outcasts, uh, those are the ones uh, that God has put his love in. And the church has set back and we're all uh, really about our pride and about everything going on and 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 and, and, and yes it's got to go this way uh, and yes it's got to go that way and we're so uh, just just meticulous uh, about things that we do uh, and structured uh, and ordered uh, I'll never forget the time that we flew to Los Angeles California we, we was preaching at Bethel Assembly of God uh, and I didn't know Bethel Assembly of God we was invited to preach uh, and so we got there uh, and come to find out Bethel Assembly of God uh, had about uh, 2,500 people uh, but they had a church under here and they had a balcony and so the preacher said I need you to preach the early service and he said he said I'm gonna get fired up and preach the later service I said okay so me and Anna went into the early service and when we began to preach I didn't realize but I was I, I was among a lot of Hispanic people and there I mean, I mean it was filled up with Hispanic people and I mean I, I mean the power of God began to hit and we preached and, and, and praise God it was time for the other 
service, I, and, and I, we seen people get up and run to the doors, and they was telling them like this, and I was thinking, what in the world's going on? Later I found out uh, that, that, that the, other, uh, the, the other 11 o'clock people was coming in, uh, but the fire marshal has declared uh, that only so many people can get in the building, uh, and so they was telling the people, you got to wait until we get these people out. Uh, they was in the balcony doing this. I mean, I mean, speaking in tongues and 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 and, and, and things going on. I, I mean, the whole front, the, the people just, just just fell out in the spirit. And the pastor looked at me and he said, uh, he said, do the second service. I said, okay, <coughs> praise God. So I didn't even get a water break. We just started up, and, and so Anna started the second service. And he asked, he asked some of them if they would, if they would courteously just leave, so the other people get in. And some of them said, "I ain't going nowhere," and they didn't leave. And so he finally pulled them in. They were sitting down everywhere. And, and so Anna started, uh, started the, the second service. When, while we was preaching the second service, he asked me to come up. I got my Bible and I preached another sermon. When it was over with, the preacher said, "You mean you preach a different sermon?" I said, "I said, yeah." Why? He goes, well, I usually preach the same sermon to the morning service and to the afternoon service. God's never given me two sermons. Uh, and, I, and I started to say, uh, well, I'm an evangelist. I only have five sermons anyway, <laughs> praise God. Uh, but but, 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 but at, the, at the time, uh, I preached a total different uh, message. Uh, and people began to uh, move. Uh, and things began to happen. Uh, and when it was over with, the preacher told me, he said, I realize uh, that we're completely lost. Uh, we just went in the hustle and uh, the bustle of things. Uh, and trying to make things happen. He said, Preacher, you walked in here and didn't even know, but we was lost with our own worship. We was lost with trying to be a church in the community instead of a living, breathing example for God. And too many times we've seen people come to church and get used to it. Let me tell you something. Anytime you get used to God, you're probably backslid. Because God ought to be new every morning. He ought to be something every single morning. It ought not be something, well, I got to get up and I got to do this and I got to do it. There, there ought to be a fresh fire in you every single morning. Things ought to begin to take place in your life. You ought to be able to worship God with a different praise every single morning. If you got the same prayer and the same praise and the same shout you did last year, guess what? You better get renewed with a fire because a prodigal church in a prodigal world will get used. We are lean. We are lazy, we are luxury loving, we are like minded when it comes to the church. And we need to stand up and quit being lip wristed when it comes to God and get a backbone and preach to the lost world and tell them what Jesus did for us. I told myself I was going to try to be still for the camera, but I'm about to shuck and buck. <laughs> So in this story, Jesus tells a, a church that was sitting back and got relaxed. He said, look here, I want to tell you a story. He said, there was two sons, not one. Jesus said in the beginning of the story, listen. He said in the beginning of the story, there's two sons. He said, the youngest son decided he wanted to trans am. <laughs> I know that's 1980s. It's probably Corvette now. And he wanted all his money. His father agreed to it. The Bible says a couple of days later, after the child was in the home and had time to think about it. Listen to me. A lot of people come to church, they got a lot of time to think about it. Going to get quiet in here just for a little bit, but it's okay. I come with an amen built in me. We come to church all the time and we get so used to it and we make up our mind what's going to happen and we still hang around to see if anything changed. And the youngest boy stood around to see if anything changed and nothing changed. You know why nothing changed? Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's not going to change because you're in a bad mood. He's not going to change because, because you're upset. He's not going to change because you forgot your pills. Come on, somebody. He's going to stay the same. And we get mad because because we're in a mood and God ain't did nothing to fix it. He's already done one thing and his blood is good enough. It was good enough then and it's good enough now and God's not going to change. So nothing changed. He packed his bags, took his money, 
got all of his friends, took them out, bought them, bought them chocolate milk. <laughs> chocolate milk and donuts for breakfast. Big Macs for lunch. And steaks for supper. Spent all of his money when they used him and took everything that he had. He had nothing. He comes to them and asks them, hey, will you help me out? And they, Pfft, we don't know you. So when he had nothing left, he went to a farmer and begged the farmer to hire him. The farmer hired him, and the Bible says uh, that, uh, that, that, that uh, he began to slop hogs. And he got so hungry that he wanted to eat the hog feed. And he thought to himself, you know what? My dad's got more money than anything else. I think I'm just going to go back and tell my dad I am sorry I have sinned against you and I have sinned against God and I don't deserve to be your son. I just want to come in and just be your servant. Just hire me to work so I can eat. So he gets up and on his way back, guess what? Before he could even tell his dad anything, the Bible said that the father saw him afar off. And the father run to him. The Bible said he brought a robe and he put a ring on his finger. He put sandals on his feet and he took the fatted calf. The, the King James Version says the fatted calf. There was one calf that was preserved just for a party. And you didn't kill that calf unless it was going to be a big party. Unless there was going to be a royal party going on. Uh, you didn't do that. Uh, but his father his father killed the fatted calf uh, and he brought it. Uh, and they had a party. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that, uh, that there, uh, there, uh, there as they got to the party, you got to understand this. The Bible said they put a ring on his finger. Look at your neighbor and say ring. I looked this up. And this is what the ring was. The ring was actually the first, first credit card in history. Did you know that? Because when a family had a ring, their signet was on that ring. Even Daniel talks about the ring where, where the king had had to sign it with a ring, with a stamp. And so the father had a ring. He put the ring back on the uh, finger. And this is what the ring stands for. There's three different things. There is authority, there is name, and there is access. That's what the ring was. The ring says, I'm going to give you back your authority. The ring says, the name is still good. Amen. The ring says, I'm going to give you access to any place. So when he would go in to buy something, he would say, we'll put it on my father's account. And he would stamp it, the first credit card ever. How about that? Praise God. And so they knew who to charge it to and who to get the money from. It also had the authority that... that that anywhere inside the kingdom where he was at, all he had to do was show the ring. And the, and the ring, they stood back because he had the authority. And see, that's one thing that the enemy wants to take from the church. He wants to take the authority. And when Jesus Christ died, he gave us delegated authority. He said, do it in my name because I already did it. When the devil shows up, tell him I said it. Say it like I said it. Say it like I mean it. Tell him I already whooped him. I already did that. And just say it in my name and take the authority. <laughs> the Bible said there was a king in the Old Testament. The king got caught because he was doing things. The Bible said that the other kings caught him, and I believe it's over in Judges chapter 1. And the Bible says when they caught him, the first thing they did was they cut off his, his, his thumbs and his big toes. His, his thumbs and his great toes, they cut him off. And he put him underneath the table, and there he was, and he sat depressed for the rest of his life because without any thumbs, he couldn't hold a sword. Without any big toes, he couldn't really have his balance. And if there's anything the enemy wants to do, he wants to keep you swordless and he wants to keep you off balance. And I believe what has happened into the church. Now, this is what I believe, what I am seeing. And I, I, I'm telling you right now, it's not all churches because there's great preachers out there and there's great churches. But I'm talking about the church corporate, the body together. We get so fixated on what's going on in our world that we do not even want to reach out and do anything in somebody else's life. And the church is sitting back and the enemy's coming through and we are sleeping. So the young man gets everything and they're having a party. Now the real story starts here. 
the son who had never left. That life changer who didn't get mad while everybody else quit. You know, one time I had a, a church and pastor the church, and, and uh, we'd moved to another church, and I had some people from another church, I'm, 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 I mean from the church I pastored, to come over with us to the other church. And they told me, they said, you know, there's certain people over at that other church that I just don't like. And I said, well, you're just going to have to get over. No, I ain't going to get over. And you know what? If they walk through the back door, I'm just going to tell them they're not welcome. I said, hang on. That's not how this works. Well, I just, don't, I just don't want to associate with them. I said, well, if you're going to go to heaven, you better get ready. Because I guarantee you there's going to be people across your street. <laughs> God's going to put them in the same avenue. He's going to put you in sweet B and put them in sweet A. And he's going to tell you, now get along. And sometimes we sit so much and we look. Maybe you have, maybe you have it. Maybe this is for the other church watching me down the street. But when certain people walk into the church and you know their background and you know where they came from and you know things of their life, sometimes you look at them and you think, hmm. Wonder why they showed up. Wonder why they're here. And when you really know the details, and you see them worshiping God and praising God, sometimes you think, hmm, wonder if that's real. Wonder if it's real. See, sometimes we're like the son that stayed home. We're mad because somebody else didn't get it right. But now they came home, the pastor's making a big deal. Come on. Yeah. Somebody said, well, you know what? I was sick and the pastor never even saw me. Well, you know, the father that was home, he didn't leave the house. He stayed there. <laughs> oh, that'll go right over in just a minute. <laughs> he waited until he came. Yeah. See, because there are times when you're in places, you don't need another human. You need God. Yeah. But there are times when we get into those places uh, that we're still mad, uh, and he's the last one we want to call to. Uh, we, want, we want everybody else uh, to see what kind of problems is going on in our life and because nobody noticed it, uh, because nobody knew that we was having a bad time, uh, because nobody knew uh, all of these things. Uh, then all of a sudden we get a pity party, uh, and we just absolutely, uh, we get frustrated, uh, and we start blaming God, uh, and we leave. Uh, and the ones who stayed, uh, when they come back, we start saying, wonder what they're doing back. Well, I've been going to church here for 15 months. The pastor never took me out for dinner on Sunday. I heard that one before, too. And look at them. Look at all the stuff that they did. Don't he know how much problems I, that they caused him? And look, now he's just eating them up. <laughs> I could tell you story after story, but let me you can handle some of my stories, so I'm just going to wait. There's been so many things and. And we have always lived our life to one way, and that's God's way. And not every decision I'm ever going to make is going to always be the right decision. I want it to, but there's been times that God has spanked me good uh, because I've made wrong decisions. Uh, but when I make wrong decisions and I get a whooping, anybody, anybody ever had a whooping? I think our problem is we ain't been jerked up by the arm and just spanked real good in our life. And, 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 and so we act like we act. But here's the thing. When God spanks me, I understand and I know and I don't want to do that again. And this young man had went out and he came back. But the real story starts at home. And I need to talk to the church people just for a minute. I need to remind you, and I've said this for three or four weeks, but you better get ready. I'm going to remind you that that door is going to open up and they're going to come from all walks of life. They're going to be black people. They're going to be Hispanic people. They're going to be Chinese people. Come on, somebody. And, 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 and listen, it, it, it's not about us to stand up and say that coronavirus came from China. We don't want China people. Shut your mouth and sit down. It ain't about us running our mouth. It ain't about us trying to come up with hatred things. It's about the love of God. It's about to stand up. It's about to treat people the same. It's about sitting home and getting a fatted calf because the prodigal son has come home, but don't be the prodigal son this day. Oh, 
We've been split. Church has been divided. There's no, there's no such thing as a white church and a black church. Have you lost your mind? There is no such thing. It's the church. And we've got to see it as the church. Got invited when I first started preaching to Dallas, Texas. Church up there. And it was a big church. I didn't know it was a big church. God just said, hey, I got one of your tapes. Will you come preach? I said, sure. Got up there and it's a big church. We got in there. And I mean, they come from everywhere. And so they said, hey, pastor, uh, when, when, or, 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 or brother, I wasn't pastor. I said, hey, hey, brother, when we get ready to preach, I said, we're going to have you a song. Uh, we're going to have you to, to preach. But uh, on, on that tape that I got, uh, I, I think your wife sang. Would she like to sing a song? And I said, sure. And I go. I said, yeah, yeah. She was saying, she goes, no, I'm not going to. I said, oh, yeah, you are. She goes, no, I'm not going to. I said, okay. So anyway, I got up there, got the microphone, and I said, hey, hey Pastor Anna, would you, or, 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 Anna would, would you come help me? She goes. <laughs> she gets up there on that keyboard, and let me tell you something. It was me and her, my two boys, and one other person was the only white person in that place. I mean, you could see us. She gets up there, and she starts playing, and I mean, I'm talking, with, I, I, I mean, I'm talking, this is one of those black churches that, that they have one key, and they don't change. They just, bah, 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 bah. and I mean, the drop, boom, 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 and I mean, and Anna's, Anna's saying she's changing keys, nobody else is, so Anna just stays in the same key. She said, it's the first time I ever did that. But I remember in my preaching, I was coming down the middle of the aisle. And I was, I was coming down the middle aisle, and I, I was talking about seeds. And I said, uh, I said, you can't take a, a tomato seed uh, and call it a watermelon. Uh, and about the time when I said watermelon, you, you know, my wife's like, watermelon? Oh, you don't say watermelon in this kind of church. And I said, watermelon. And about that time, this big old black dude stood up, and I thought, my God, he's going to body slam me. He said, preach, preacher. I said, I'll keep preaching. But when you get into a position in your life and you've been in church, but you don't take the name of the church, you take the name who the church belongs to. Yeah, come on. Well, I'm Baptist. Well, I'm Methodist. People tell me all the time, well, I didn't know y'all was Pentecostal. And I had to tell them, listen, listen, we're not Pentecostal. We just do Pentecostal things. We're life changers, church. I first moved to town. They said, yeah, that Pentecostal church. He said, hey, well, one guy said, you have rattlesnakes? I said, no. I ain't got no rattlesnakes. Or somebody said, y'all had rattlesnakes. I said, no. Do y'all fall out? Yeah. Why do you fall out? Well, I, we, I don't know. It's the power of God. Well, I don't know about that. One guy said, <laughs> said just here the other day, well, I went to your church for a little while. He said, but I didn't know y'all was Pentecostal. He said, I don't understand all that screaming and hollering and jumping around. And, 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 and this guy is a bar fly. He stays in bars all the time. And I said, you can't tell me you go down in bars and everybody just sits there real polite and just sips their beer. I said, you know good and well, you get crazy and everything else. He said, well, that's different. I said, it ain't different. I, I just switch drinks, honey. I don't have to drink Budweiser. I drink the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and we got to come to an understanding that we've been sitting the whole time. We may not have ever left. Bless God the ones that does. We don't know if we want to associate with them again. They're coming. You hear me? You hear me? They're coming. And they're coming, and they're coming quick. You better mend your hearts. Somebody. You better mend your hearts. Everything you got in your heart, everything you said you wouldn't do, <laughs> God loves it when I say, when you say, I don't do that again. I quit saying that. <laughs> I did. I told Anna, Anna a long time ago when we left Pittsburgh, I said, I won't ever pastor a church in Pittsburgh. 
That's a true story. We was leaving. I mean, it was, it was like, it was like, I mean, it was like, whew. Pastor Aaron comes in. The whole story, and I preached all the way around that to get to this. The whole story focuses in that while they was partying, meanwhile, the son who never left was throwing a fit. The son who did everything right according to him was having problems. See, isn't it just like God? See, we always talk about, listen to me, I need somebody to hear me real quick. We always talk about, Lord, I need you to mend relationships. Peter said, well, Lord, says, what happens if my brother sin against me? He didn't say, well, what if I sin against my brother? Listen to what Peter said. What happens if my brother sin against me? Jesus said, forgive him seven times 70 in a day. That's 490 times in one day. <laughs> if your friend has betrayed you 490 times in a day. <laughs> Woo. Get enough friends. But what he's trying to say is that it's literally impossible. But no matter what happens, our job is to keep our heart in check. How many here needs a healing? Just raise your hand. Raise it high. Our healing is not dependent on whether Jesus is going to do it or not. He's already did it. That's not where our healing is hinged on. Our healing is hinged on where do we start really believing See, we can believe it for everybody else. We can pray real good when it comes to somebody else needing a healing. But when it comes to us needing a healing, there's a lot of little details sometimes that's just pushed up in our life, that's just raised up in our life that has caused us to sit back and doubt. Not that God can not do it, but are we really worthy enough to receive it? Now, I need to clear something up here. There's nothing you got to do. He's already did it. But sometimes, not all the times, but in some cases, our healing doesn't manifest because of issues that we have. We can say, well, I forgive them, but I just won't ever go around them again. I'm preaching real good right now. Well, I'm going to forgive them, but I'm, not go I'm just not going to forget what they did. I'm going to forgive them, but I'm going to keep my guard up. Jesus never said that's the way we work. The apostle Paul said it like this. Mark them. Don't hold a grudge against them, but mark them. put a mark on their life. There's people coming back. There's things that's changed. I don't care what they did. I, I don't care what the situation is. I, I don't care how much money they stole. I, I don't care whose wife or whose husband they might have slept with. I, I don't 
don't care what kind of drugs happen. My God, somebody hear me. God is drawing them, and there is a draw on America, and the church better wake up. We are lost and are done in our self-righteous attitude that we're not celebrating what God's bringing back home. lost in our own thing. Just lost. Mine goes back to the places we've hurt in. Some of you's hurt privately, nobody even knows. Some of you's been dealt cards and things that nobody else should be dealt with. Some of you's been Molested. Some of you's been lied to. Some of you's been cheated on. Some of you's been betrayed. And time after time, your story is just like the one that stayed home. Well, God, I never left you. I stayed. I didn't quit church. We've set back. We got to learn to celebrate the outcast. Because it's with the outcast that God will build this last day revival with. It is with the outcast. Let me tell you something right now. There's been a lot of churches, a lot of preachers around call me an outcast. It's okay. I just keep moving with God. I let God keep blessing my life. We've all said things and been places and done things. And I'm not telling you that I've never looked around and thought, what in the world are they doing here? Because I have. God has stopped me. He said, they're mine. They're mine. Every head bowed.